Welcome, everyone. Welcome back to the Black Carnivore podcast. This is, uh, well, Black Carnivore story time. I have been calling this a podcast for a long time, but in fact, um, this is an opportunity to hear our voices, our stories, talk about how we have used the carnivore diet to reverse, um, you know, chronic metabolic disease and other kinds of ill health. And, um, and I'm really excited to introduce Leonard today, who is 53 years old. And uh, just shy of a year ago, he was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and uh, said, oh no, I am not going to let this this, I'm not going to let this stand. This is going to stop. This ends now. And he, you know, really, t- you know, took the time to uh, find the information and turn around his health. And uh, we're going to hear his story today. And it is very inspiring. So hold on. I said in the beginning when I got the diagnosis probably around 10 months ago from the VA and um, I received that package in the mail unbeknownst to me and It was a glucose meter, test strips and all. I'm like, they must have made a mistake, you know. Uh, I'm fine, you know, and I looked at, I finally read blood work for the first time and looked at it and I saw that my A1C was above the normal range, which made me, and I still wasn't convinced. I still called the doctor the next day and she was like, oh no, you type two diabetic. I said, well, what about pre-diabetes? Why you didn't tell me? She said, oh, we sent you a letter last year to inform you that you were pre-diabetic, but I don't read. Wait, so they <laughs> never they never actually said it to your face, like when you were in there with the doctor? Wow. No, I, um, well, when you go in, the blood work comes back a couple weeks later, and they send you a letter. No one there, she never called me and told me, but she said it was in the letter that I had got the previous year that I was pre-diabetic. And I'm thinking, wow. so that's a whole year that you, you know, essentially wasted because they didn't give you that information. Exactly. Exactly. So the next thing that happened was next thing that happened, uh, the dietitian called me a couple of days later, which uh, this was during COVID. So we couldn't go in, you know, I couldn't go in. The dietitian called me and uh, and at that point. She was telling me all these things, what I need to start reducing carbs and only eat this. And she said, I sent you a package. Package came with all these pictures of food and how much carbs I could eat and all this. But in the meantime, right around the time I got that package, so I went out immediately and started buying these things, what was on the list, making sure I had those things. You know, uh, I downloaded a carb counting app, you know, it shows pictures of how many carbs. So when I Went to McDonald's in the morning for my breakfast. I get an egg McMuffin and say, well, that's 60 carbs. I'm trying to count carbs through the day. And uh, but somewhere down, I didn't even, my, let me say this, I didn't even know what a carb was. I've always heard about carbs. I never knew or cared what a carb was or what it did, which foods were and which weren't. weren't. But Well, wait, so, so let me ask you, before any of this happened, were you a person who, like, um, you know, did you diet? Did you ever count calories? Or was this like all brand Never. new information to you? Oh, so Never. this was a lot for you to like really kind of comprehend all at once. Oh my God. I But I dove, I dove in, you know, fear motivated me a, little, a lot, right? I, I dove in, you know, uh, I would from time to time tell like my wife, like, we're going to eat healthy. And our idea of eating healthy is what they say is healthy while you're in the store shopping. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Which we did a little of that, you know. Like I said, I thought the supplements had me healthy. You know what I mean? And um, so I, um, when I just got all this stuff, she, I tried. I started doing the things that they were suggesting. But meanwhile, I'm still taking the metformin. That was the first time I ever checked my blood sugar. I had to read the instructions. I had to prick my finger, you know. And, and I was noticing, you know, my blood sugar was like, 160 somewhere up in there and i was like well damn i'm looking at these charts that's high you know and i'm and i googled how can how to reverse type 2 diabetes i think i did it on youtube and and the first person that popped up was dr ken berry wow (laughs) that's pretty awesome his picture popped up and i clicked on and he changed my life he changed my whole life First thing I was relieved to know, first thing he said, you can absolutely reverse it. And I was Mm -hmm. glad to hear that. And he actually was led me to you, you know what I mean? But Mm -hmm. 
Dr. Ken Berry changed everything for me. You know, the way he the way he presents his information, the way he talks, you know, he speaks with layman's terms where you can understand it, you know, and uh, everything made sense. Not only did I I started I started Carnivore probably that same day, that next day after I found him. You know, because it to me it didn't make sense. If I'm trying to reverse my type two diabetes and carbs turn the sugar in my blood, which I didn't know, and I found out all this information in a very short period of time. Um, carbs cause inflammation. You know, I was eating. I had severe acid reflux. I kept Rolaids and in my bag 24/7. Everything I ate gave me heartburn, bad, bad heartburn. I had a lot of inflammation. My knees were killing me. I thought it was from working on a garbage truck years ago. You know, at nighttime, I would have I almost eight leaves, you know, taking some kind of anti-inflammatory two to three times a day. Wait, you would take eight a leave at night? No, I was, I was, uh, I was, <laughs> no, I would probably take four in a day. I would oh, take you them were every saying night you just ate so them my like knee, I wouldn't wake up in pain. Yeah. Oh, okay. you know, my, they, and they told me I had been seen about my knees over the time, you know, and they were like, well, you got arthritic movement, so you got arthritis and that's just the way it is. You know, I'm in, I'm 50, you know, I'm in my fifties, you know, that's part of getting old, I thought. And, uh, I noticed, I mean, I was checking my weight alone. I went and bought a scale, you know, I was buying all these things, low carb bread, which still have carbs in it. You know what I mean? I was doing all these things that I thought, you know, according to what the dietitian was saying. And uh, that's when the whole world turned for me, you know, once I found Ken Berry. And, he link and you know, that links you to other people. Face uh, YouTube is good at linking you to similar topics and people with similar ideas, you know. And since then, I, when I started Carnivore, you know, I would say it was a drastic change. I stopped taking metformin two days after I started. I took no more metformin. My blood sugar levels would drop to like, you know, I was getting like 103, 104 in the morning on my, with my fasting. At this point, currently, I very, I check it seldomly. I check it because it's it's, root, it's just normally between 80, 80, between 85 and 95. That's where it stays. It fluctuates, but it don't spike, you know, and uh, I'll, I keep my meter with me because on my second job, I drive charter. I'm a charter driver, charter buses out. So I'm out of town a lot. You know, I do limos. I do all that kind of stuff on my second job, which is pretty much a full time job. So I'm on the road a lot. And I had to learn how to actually, you know, I had to learn how to eat carnivore when I, while I'm on the road. And I kind of got some tips from Dr. Barry on, um, you know, McDonald's and Burger King got pretty good beef, you know. So whenever I was out of town, you know, like some of the hotels I stay in when I'm with a group, you know, they have breakfast. I go down, I get the bacon and the eggs. You know, I sometimes wonder what the eggs are cooked in. You know, oh, I eliminated all the seed oils. I found out the whole thing just revealed, just fell up, you know, came of life to me. Everything made sense, you know, and I did not realize I didn't even know what a microbiome was. Now I know my <laughs> microbiome is healthy. You know, I have no acid reflux, period. Haven't had it in nine months. I have no yeah. aches, no pains. I, I know I don't have any inflammation going on. Um, I adjusted my, my workout. You know, I understand now that the working out is more more just for how my well-being, how I feel. You know, I'm not working out to lose weight. You know, I understood that from Dr. Barry as well that, uh, he always says that weight loss is only 2%. I mean, weight working out is only 2% of weight loss, 1% to 2%. Mm -hmm. This is all in my diet. You know, yeah. uh, I experienced every benefit just about that, you know. The, the, I mean, it's it's amazing. And uh, uh, so on a daily basis, man, I'm pretty, I eat a lot of beef now for some reason. I love bacon. I eat a lot of bacon. I eat a lot of beef. Uh, I heard you speaking about the flanking cut uh, ribs. <laughs> I love them. Yeah. Yeah, I almost haven't had ribeyes in a while. I was on ribeyes real hard, but Mar Walmart has the uh, McLaren farm, and they cut the Franken cut, and the air fryer tastes just better than a ribeye almost. Sometimes I eat them almost every day. <laughs> <It's just about. laughs>
<laughs> and um, I love that. I'm glad that you found um, something oh my that God. you really liked. Um, <laughs> the concerns I had were, you know, being on the road, sometimes I would eat a hot dog, you know, and I know it's got to be some carb in it, you know, and I've heard Dr. Barry talk about kind of on a budget. You know, sometimes all you can afford is some of the cheapest meat you steal, carnivore, you know, mm -hmm. and I don't get as caught up no more. I have relaxed a lot because I learned a lot more about it, you know, um, with the intermediate fasting. I was intermediate fasting a pretty a lot, you know, and I kind of stopped, you know, I would, because I would still eat breakfast in the morning and then eat again at home. And but I've kind of gotten back on the intermediate fasting a little bit where I don't where I try to at least go 18 hours. And, um, oh, my God, I had so much I want to tell you because I'm so excited to be here and um, and actually be talking to you, you know, because y'all my people now, you know. And, and my, <laughs> well, the whole thing about it, I'm let, struggling. Let, my struggle is the other people now, especially uh -huh. my family and my household. That's my biggest because I want for them what I want for myself, you know. And it's difficult, even with my son, you know. He's on the still on the, the diet, the regular, you know, the cereal, the stuff, you know, and um, him being six, you know, I know he would thrive better, you know, but I didn't want to just throw it on him, you know, and my wife, she tried. I ain't got to give it to her. She tried. But the minute I go out of town, I feel like she, you know what I mean? If it's because I do most of the cooking now, you know what I mean? Which don't, which, yeah. Let me say my, my air fryer does most of the cooking. So, yeah. and I went air fryer crazy. I got two in the kitchen, two uh, air fryer oven, a, a big power XL with the racks. Then I have a small one, which I take on the road with me now. I started taking my air fryer. I said, you know what? Versus me trying to find a longhorn and having to instruct them about making sure they don't cook my meat in no oil or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. I can just go to the grocery store, grab a pack of ribeyes and cook them in my room in my air fryer. So that's what I do now. Before you were diagnosed with um, diabetes, you you know you didn't even know that you were pre-diabetic, let alone diabetic. So was your you know physically were you did you feel like you were in perfect shape? Like what was what was life like before before all this? Uh, the things, the ailments that I had, I thought were normal. You know what I mean? I wasn't in no severe pain. You know, I had heartburn. You know, my knees hurt. You know what I mean? And, well, you, you know, said I'm you were six size. foot five, right? Um, so yeah. were you six foot five in normal size or, I mean, the, the appropriate weight? Like, I don't even know what no. the appropriate weight for I, someone um, that high. I was weighing, I was weighing uh, like 250. And I should, according to the American Heart Association, which I don't take much from them, but according to that chart, they have, I should only been wearing 198. For my height, which is like I'm like six four and a half, close to six five, okay. right in there. I should only okay. be wearing one ninety eight, you know. And um, so I I I lost like forty eight pounds in probably in less than three months. Wow! Yeah, absolutely less than three months. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. And um, right. It was, but to me, it was the way I was feeling that was better. But the inches were going off before the pounds were. Man, I went down from I was wearing a forty two waist. And I, I, I'm down, I weigh a 34 now. And that's probably where I was at in high school, like a 32, 34. So yeah, I, I lost a lot of weight. I mean, well, not a lot for me, but a lot for me. Cause everybody at my job, like, what the hell happened? What did you do? <laughs> yeah. You know, and I'm trying to carry the message now. And I, I have to hold watch myself. Cause I want to, I get kind of, I want, I almost tend to get a little bit evangelistic, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm learning not to be, you know, Unless somebody asks me and I'm eager to tell them at that point, you know, some good news, you know, and uh, I really want to try to reach out to like people like myself, you know, just regular guys. I mean, you know, my past, my past also helped me a lot, you know, and I don't normally share this, but I will share this with because it might be somebody that want, might need to hear this. You know, I'm also a member of a 12 step fellowship. You know, I'm a recovering alcoholic and recovering addict. And uh, I've been sober for uh, almost 14 years now. And some of the same principles and things that we do that, that I use daily in my in my in my uh, recovery actually helped me with this transition. You know what I mean? Because I don't look at sugar and carbs the same way I look at alcohol and anything else. You know, it's poison. I don't do well with it, you know, and um, 
Actually, I think that that is really helpful for, um, you know, people to hear because a lot of people struggle with addiction to sugar without even Mm -hmm. realizing that that's something that's possible. So, uh, so tell us more, like, you know, how do you apply what you've learned in AA, um, to, uh, you know, to sugar? Well, in AA, you know, you know, there are a lot of cliches, you know, you got 12 step program, you know, and Mm -hmm. First off, a 12-step program will make your life better, even if you ain't an alcoholic. If you just live by those principles and things, you know, like, you know, you know one is, they got cliches like one is too many, a thousand is never enough. You know, uh, um, it's just, uh, it's kind of, man, that's, it gets real deep with that. It's like, um, one thing we do is carry the message of recovery. So... I'm trying to carry the message of this, of this physical recovery, you know. Um, it just, I don't know if it was something about me being, it allowed me to be able to do things and finish them and go see things through, which I couldn't do prior to coming into the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, um, You and for me to get there, let me say this also, for me to even get to A, something had to happen. You know, mm-hmm. my life had to be something had to have. Most people don't just walk into AA because they just feel like, oh, morally, I need to straighten up and get my life together. Usually something had to be me. Most people's scorecard got to be reading zero. You know what I mean? And I was no yeah. different, you know. You know, I've been to prison a number of times. You know, um, I was able to turn my life completely around, you know, once I stopped drinking. And uh, once I started working the program and got a sponsor, and started trying to live the steps to, to the best of my ability, you know, and, it, and, it, and it's all about progress, not perfection. And um, I'm currently, I'm just as active in the program as I as I ever have been. I struggled for a lot of years with my addiction and um, my life is totally different. You know what I mean? It's great. You know, it ain't perfect, but it's, 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 it's totally different. And, but the thing about it is, is that I don't want to, I didn't want to be, clean and sober and, and, and uh, living living a happy life, uh, the life that we you know get a chance to live as long as we stay sober and be unhealthy. So many of our members have put in a lot of time and changed their life around, got 20, 30 years, you know, their life straightened out. You would never know they ever had a problem, you know, like my sponsor in there, but they end up eating themselves to death, you know, and I actually have a friend that's in the rooms and uh, like we've been doing a lot of Zoom meetings now with COVID and he, man, another friend of mine, he's actually a doctor. I didn't even know it. He been We've been in Zooming together for the last year and uh, he heard me sharing in a meeting. I was talking about my diet and getting healthy, you know, because we straighten out the alcohol problem, you know what I mean? And we try to get healthy physically, but the diet that we were eating, the standard American diet, you know, uh, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't what else. So I had been sharing about it, and he said, "Leonard, I need to talk to you." And that's when he told me that he, you know, he, he was a, he's an actual doctor, has a practice in Louisiana. He's an older gentleman, but he's a doctor, and um, he's actually he tells me he actually apologizes to his patients. He said, "Leonard, I don't know where you're getting this information." And I say, "Well, the information is available to us all. We are more fortunate today because we got computers we walk around with in our pocket." You know, if had it not been for the uh, the access to information, man, I know, you know, I, I don't know what where, 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 where I would be or how long I would live. But due to the inf- uh, the information that's available, thanks to you and people like you, you know, and we're putting it out there, you know, that this is is a better way. You know, it's just kind of hurtful to me, you know, now to know that, you know, even my own wife, you know, who deals with autoimmune issues, a lot of them. And I know it, you know, and I'm like, don't you, you know, she's like, you're not a doctor, you're not a doctor. And I'm like, oh, well, I started researching yeah. doctors, you know, and, you know, like, why do they tell us this, you know, and I, the information I got is that they just going by what a lot of them, some of them know. And it's, it made me realize the country I live in, you know, all that contributed, just like it contributed to my alcoholism, you know, where it's okay to drink, but whatever part of me, maybe it's, it's genealogy or whatever. Once I start, I can't stop. So mm-hmm. I can't drink successfully. And yeah. at some point, at some point along the line, just like with sugar, I lose the desire to drink. You know what I mean? I lost the desire to drink years and years ago, you know. And 
I noticed the same thing for sugar and carbs happened to me, and it happened pretty fast. I lost the desire for it. I love honey buns and macaroni and cheese just like the next man, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. But they don't affect me when I go in the store anymore, and I'm grateful to them. And I think I hear a lot of people saying they share, they struggle with the sugar and the carbs, you know, in the beginning, the cravings or whatever. I don't know if it's because I kind of weaned my way into carnivore because I was trying to do follow the dietitian's way at first, but I never really had a strong craving for uh, any any sugars or carbs at, at all. Were, did you, know, you eat a lot pretty, of sweets before? Uh, yes, oh. especially when I hit the road on trips, you know, in the bus. Uh -huh. I would have my area set up, Reese's Cups here, chewing gum, <laughs> three different kinds of you know, uh, my peanuts, you know, I would look like a billy goat driving down the road on long trips because I felt like that keeps me alert. My Reese, I mean, I love Reese's Cups. I'll have everything lined up, you know, okay. and then I'm drinking the energy drinks, the ones with the sugar in them. You know, I'm drinking yeah. kind of cool with those. So I was really doing it up, you know. I, did, I, yeah. I, I was eating a lot of sugar, a lot, you know, and today, I mean, I'm, I'm like, I'm on fire about this. That's one thing my friend Vic, the doctor, he's like, he has me speak on Wednesdays. He's done it twice. He has a group of diabetics and obesity people that meet every Wednesday. And he had me come in and speak to them. He said, they need to hear this, what you're saying. And he's Wait, actually is this your, in your AA group or you're saying you're, yes. you're for physician? Yes, he is. yes, yes. That's where we met. He's, he's a member and he's also oh. a doctor. Yes. So that's great. So you are giving your testimony to other diabetics who are right. um, in recovery and you're helping them to consider eating this way. Well, that's fantastic. The, the diabetics that he had, that he, they're in his group, they're not in recovery. They're just oh, part I of his see. practice. They were just, they were just some of his patients. Mm -hmm. Oh, how exciting though. So did, did any of them like decide to do it or, you know, what's I, that been like? I haven't followed up. It's only, we've only done it twice, but I, I told him, make sure you can, anybody who wants my number, get my number, call me. You know, yeah. I'll be your accountability partner. You know, I have yeah. two friends that are in recovery. Um, one, I told him, he, he, he heard me sharing in a meeting. He came after the meeting, he asked me about it. And I told him what I was doing. He was diabetic as well. And uh, he went home that day, called me before I got to the house. He called me and said, okay, what I need to get rid of. He threw away everything in his kitchen that had carbs and sugar in it that same day. He hadn't looked back. I mean, we talk every day, so we, it's kind of it's kind of like we are, I'm his accountability partner, holding each other accountable. He'll call me. He called me this morning and said, "Look, I'm getting too skinny, man. I'm too skinny." He's <laughs> the short guy. He's the man. He went and bought clothes too fast after he lost weight. He lost weight again. Now the clothes he went and bought it too small. I said, well, oh, wow. I, from my information I got, your body going to stop once it's, once it's done, you know. Yeah. And um, so, and I have another friend that started three and a half weeks ago. He called me. He heard me sharing. He's in the rooms. He called me, heard me sharing. And he was like, man, I, he had, he said he had a girlfriend over and things didn't work out right. He's actually on insulin. He has lost, as of the day, he's lost 19 and a half pounds. Wow. He hadn't taken no insulin. He says his blood sugar was like 105 with no insulin. Wow. And he was saying he got to take some shirts he bought back this morning that were 3X. He said, oh, none of them fit. And he's a big guy like me, but he was a lot heavier. He said he had actually got up to like three something at one point. Uh -huh. And uh, I think he he's down around 260 now. But um, he's like, I'm not never going back. He said, I can't never go back to eating standard. And he just started three and a half weeks ago. Yeah. So when you first started and you were taking metformin, did you work with your doctor to like wean down the medication or did you just stop? Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. so I am so glad you were able to do that and it worked out for you. But for anybody who's watching, if you are taking insulin, you do have to, you're supposed to work with your doctor to come down yeah. because it can drive your blood sugar too low if you're, you know, still taking medication and you also reduce. But um, so, but that you know, but to hear your story, so you were able to do that, and it sounds like your numbers came down really quickly, like within a few weeks, huh? I didn't have I didn't I didn't have too much more room on my fingers because I was pricking so much during the day when I stopped the <laughs> metformin just to make sure, yeah. you know what I mean, that I, that I wasn't you know that everything. So 
Yeah, I was still constantly monitoring to my, my blood sugar, you know, and uh, I watched it just go down below where it was, even with the metformin. Even when I was taking the metformin, I wasn't getting the numbers I was once I stopped the carbs and, 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 and even the artificial sweeteners. I thought I started off with the um, zero, the zero Cokes, you know, and the zero. And then I found out that that my mind and pancreas, all that stuff is connected. And when something sweet touches my lips, my it, my brain says, hey, we got something sweet. And my, yeah. and my pancreas, you know, so I'm like, wow, I stopped that. So now I do, I do, I do love my carbonated waters, though. I drink, yeah. you know, and <laughs> I, I was glad to hear somebody doing a uh, cast on the uh, face of carbonated water, which Dr. Barry did, because I drink. And there are no sweeteners and no sugar, but I was kind of concerned about the hint of the flavor. It was the flavor doing anything or whatever, but it's water, right? So I haven't yeah. had any spikes at all from that. So I'm pretty sure because I drink a lot of water. And I go to the bathroom <laughs> I, like a I waste do, boy. I do too. And I used to drink a lot of flavored water, you know, like you do. And then uh, right as the pandemic hit, I just, you know, there was so much mayhem and I thought, you know, I I just probably shouldn't be buying water, you know, like I, I should be buying the things that are essential and drinking tap water. And then I ended up buying a soda stream. So I was making, you know, my own sparkling water at home, which I love. And now I don't like the flavors. So really? every now and then, yeah, every now and then I'll get something and it'll just be kind of like, uh, you know, it tastes kind of sweet or I don't know. It just isn't. I just don't like it anymore. So now, you know, just plain seltzer with a little salt in it. And it's like, you can't get more perfect than that. Right. And the salt thing, I, um, uh, uh, Redmond's Real Salt, you know, I got that from mm -hmm. Dr. Barry. Uh, I start ordering it on Amazon. I, I actually got the actual rocks. I keep those in my bag and I, like, I chop a piece off, you know, and I, from time to time, I throw a piece in my mouth, you know, and, um, I heard you actually talk told me about the, like putting the salt in your purse and sometimes if you feel in a certain kind of way you could take some salt and you start it back. I've noticed that, you know, because I, my my rest situation because I work two two jobs, you know, my rest situation is kind of like this. It's not it's not constant. It's not routine, you know. On a good day, I'm get I'll get five to six hours, sometimes less than that, because I'm working two jobs and and most oh, of my wow. work on the other job is over the weekend. So I know my that's rest. That's not enough me. sleep. <laughs> that's not hmm? enough sleep. You must be exhausted. Uh, I actually you five okay. hours usually is enough. You know, I feel pretty good, but I I mean I could tell a big difference if I get six to seven. I feel uh, I feel amazing at six to seven, and I. <laughs> I go to work nowadays feeling amazing, and I be want to tell people, people, "Say how you doing today, man? I'm amazing. I feel like a, I feel like a, I feel like a warrior. Man, you need to leave the sugar alone, please. Stop eating those you, you, you should. You need to. I thought I, I thought I thought I knew what feeling good was until I actually start feeling good. You know yeah. what I thought good health was, and actually feeling healthy now. And you know it's a and I try, I want every I want others to see that when even when I'm in Walmart now I'm noticing people like I see inflammation in people I see the you know especially our people the Walmart up the street from my house is in the, I'm in a black area and when I go in there I can't I stopped in there on the way home today and grabbed some water and I was looking I, I see people's buggy some of them can't even walk they have, you know they got the carts now because we so unhealthy we can ride in the grocery store and I'm like and I'm looking yeah. in their buggy and I want to tap them on the shoulder and say hey. I guarantee you might be to get on your feet if you just eat meat, you know. But I know I can't do that, so yeah. I was I just I want to be a part of some kind of way, man, a, a sharing what I'm feeling, especially yeah. with people like me, man. Been to prison, the guys out on the street, you know. You can eat good and still, if you're gonna be on the street, change how you eat, at least, yeah. you know. Well, I love how, my how does that work? I mean, for someone you know who's on the street. Um, I mean, I'm going to assume that people either, um, you know, don't really have time or the inclination to cook or have a home place that they can, you know, really do a lot of cooking. So how do you do carnivore in that situation? Or, you know, if you're just a person who, like, y you know, you just never did much cooking, don't really know how, like, you know, how do you turn from 
the uh, fast foods? Because it sounded like you used you had a regular you know habit of having McDonald's for breakfast. So how did what does carnivore look like for you now? And and what were um, you eating before? I've learned how to eat out carnivore. It says I if um I can I I'll go to Burger King if I'm out and I ain't got time to try to find. I love to see guys on the side of the road with their grill selling meat. Those are my favorite. Yeah. If I see yeah. you selling some meat, I'm pulling over. Long, if you ain't got no sauce on it, we good. Give me a slab. You know, I can eat a slab like that. You know, and I want the one fattiest one. Like, you want the one fat? So you give me that fat you got on the grill right there. You know, uh, I know how to go to McDonald's. I go in and say, give me four quarter pound of patties and two orders of bacon. Put them in one container. They're actually cheaper than if you got a, a regular meal. You know, Burger King the same way. Give me four Whopper patties, uh, two orders of bacon with it. I carry my real salt in my bag everywhere I go. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I carry my real salt everywhere I go. It's in my bag. That's the one I take with me, and I got one in the cabinet. I kind of perfect the eating out because I'm always out, except when I come home. Like, I'm home tonight. Even I still have a job to do tonight. It's a quick one. I don't go into 11 just to pick up, drop off. But I got my salt with me. I had to learn how to go in the store. If I'm in a convenience store and I'm hungry, nothing else around, I'm on the road, I can go in and get some crackling. I love the crackling with the fat on it. We still got the skin with the when you bite down and you get the juicy fatness from it. I love those. I don't even do the regular pork rinds no more. It got to be the crackling. I don't know what it is about them. I stopped even getting the seasoning because I didn't know if the season was messing with my biome a little bit. Now, I'll be talking about my biome. And I want the gangsters and all the thugs that want to be so no man you're gonna end up you know once you get 35 and 40 people start saying those are just getting old problems i feel like i found a fountain of youth i really do i go to the i stop at la fitness three to four times a week in the morning and i'm watching i'm looking at the people in there working hard and i'm saying they got the willingness but i'm wondering what are they eating though you know because i've been going to the la fitness now for at least Four months, I changed gyms and stopped working out at work, started stopping at LA Fitness because I go by there on the way to work in the morning. So I'm in at five in the morning and I'm looking at the same people. And I'm like, don't look like they're making much progress. And they working hard. I work out for 20 minutes, but I don't stop. I, I do cardio 10 and I get the heavy weights for 10 and I'm out of there. You know, and that's why I feel best. Said. I never I never knew I could listen to my body. Now I hear my body now, and, I, I, and that's amazing. And uh, I just want, especially like the guys I work with that I know is diabetic. I've been talking to a few of them. They try listening. And I'm thinking about the people because in my installation, there's quite a few. It's, we got over 100 employees at my particular installation. I work for the city of Atlanta in, in Watershed. And we've lost maybe eight, nine people in the last year and a half. You know, didn't wake up, found them in the bathroom. You know, oh, all, wow. the immune, all the immune issues. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, now that I, I didn't even know what autoimmune disease was. Now I know all this stuff, you know, what autoimmune disease. Yeah, you've are. definitely done your research. Like uh, you, um, you know, you're doing carnivore like perfectly. You've, you know, you've identified all the places where people kind of mess up and you've got it all down right. So I'm glad. To hear I mean, it. and I didn't, I'm not such a hell of a guy. I mean, I, I never try to be like I'm the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I mean, I, I mean, and then I know I'm not, I can't say, I don't want to say I'm perfectly with it, but I found what works and I'm not, and I've learned through listening to you and people like you, you know, it's just not just, I don't have to be so strict with times and when I eat and when I work out because my, my schedule fluctuates, you know, that's why even in my AA, my, my AA pro groups and stuff, I don't make too many commitments because I never know when I'm going to have to work, you know, with, with charters, they come the charters come at different times. So. I have, I'm just flexible, you know, and I don't, I used to get kind of bent out of shape. Oh, Lord, what I'm going to do? I, I'm always worrying about what I'm going to, how I'm going to make sure I get a carnivore meal in if I'm not at home, which I've learned it's, it's no problem for me now at all. I'll go in QT. I don't know if y'all have QT where you at, but it's a like mm -hmm. big gas station, so like racetrack, you know, they got the rollers and they got a cigarette large station. I can go in there, go to the counter where the food is. So I might say, give me four of your sausage patties. I go get three hot dogs and put them in there. And that's what I take up to the counter, you know, 
Which, and I got already, probably I keep my sparkling water, I take it on the road with me. So I got a little small cooler full of water that's cold, ready to go. Um, stuff like that. I learned how to, you know, satisfy myself, you know, on the road. I, I sometimes I used to try to take butter with me, <laughs> but I, the butter always melt and make a mess, you know, <laughs> so I stopped taking the butter. Yeah, butter doesn't travel very well. It ain't no travel too good, so I, I yeah. learned to leave it alone. But maybe, but... You, maybe you could put it in a mason jar and with the lid on. Yeah, and I can still use it because if it's melted, it's still yeah. good to go anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I used to do put butter in my coffee every morning, and I even ordered the MCT oil, and I'm not sure about it. I've been wanting to ask somebody who knows about the MCT oil. Is it necessary? I was doing the MCT oil with the butter in my coffee in the morning because I do get one cup of coffee at the Dunkin' up the street. As soon as I leave out of the gym, I go in the Dunkin', I get a large cup with espresso in it, and I was putting the butter in there and froth. I bought a froth. I was doing the whole nine, you know, but <laughs> yeah, I, nice. I, um, I started saying I don't need the butter every day, even though it, don't t- it tastes pretty good with butter, but I hadn't done it in a while for some reason. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I, I, I still have a lot of things. I'm still learning, you know, a lot about this this way of eating and i'm so glad i met came across your channel and joined your facebook group because i have learned so much from listening to you and the people you interview you know and i i wanted to be a part actually a guy who's on your show it lives here in Atlanta. i made contact with him i was watching him on your show he said he reversed his kidney disease and i've heard him mention oh, yeah. Atlanta. i said Atlanta. i said yeah. Atlanta. He lives here. So I looked at the link and you had this information post. I hit him on Facebook. He hit me right back and said, well, give me a call. Gave me his number. Me and him have been talking for the last few days, you know. And oh, he was excellent. like, man, I, yeah, he wants me to help. He said, man, I need to do like you. I'm like, well, I'm thinking, you know, because he's saying he still drinks some things that ain't kind of questionable or whatever. But what I've noticed is, and I try to tell people, you know, you know, people get on me about the veggies thing, man. That's the veg- you don't do no veggies. I said, well, if I were keto, keto do veggies, they still get a lot of the same benefits that carnivore get. You know, they still get the benefits, but I'm too busy. I don't want to have to count nothing. You know, I, I don't have time. I don't. This makes my life easier with me not having to count nothing, worry about nothing, and try to determine which vegetable, you know, I can introduce. First off, I don't like them like that. You know, that's why I think kids know best. That's why kids don't like them when you first give them to them. We made to start liking them. So I, I feel like my life is just too much on the go to do the veggie thing, you know. And plus, I ain't never been crazy about them. I have to have put all kind of stuff on them to make them me like them, you know. So I'm like, it was no problem with the veggies. People are like, you don't eat, you got have veggies. I'm like, well, you know, what I know about veggies now, man, ain't, we ain't been getting the whole story on the veggie thing. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's fine for some, you know. And, you know, I just don't want to find out which ones. I ain't got time to do that, you know. And I'm not, I don't try to talk down on them because people will fight you about the veggie, you know, mm-hmm. and they look at me sideways a lot of times, you know, but I explain <laughs> to them, you know, if it ain't in meat, I, I'm pretty sure I don't need it if I can't get it from meat, you know. Yeah. Well, so, what did your doctor say? I mean, they're seeing your numbers and your blood work come down, right? I couldn't wait to see her because they start, finally started letting us come back to the doctor. I could not wait to get to that doctor's office, which I went about a month and a half ago, I asked her to come in and sit there. She's actually a PA, but anyways, she's my primary care at the VA. I went in, I was like, yeah, I can't wait to get in here because I felt like it was going to be a confrontation from all the, from watching you guys on the channels and Dr. Barry. So I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. I got my information. I'm not going for it. You know what I mean? I've asked her, I even asked her in a message. I said, could you refer me to an endocrinologist? Somebody who has a little more information about this thing, you know, no, we can't do that. You know, you got to be like, your A1C got to be like 10 or above. I'm like, what? You got to be on insulin pump. No, I went, okay. So when she came in, they, the first thing the nurse did was check my blood sugar, which was like 85, my fasting blood sugar. So she was like, oh, wow, this. And then she came in and, but she, went, she like I say, she had to send my blood work off. She was like, I see you lost a lot of weight. I was like, oh, yeah. Mm hmm. I said, I ain't took that metformin you gave me since I took it for about maybe three weeks at the most before I found out the truth. And um, she's like, well, okay, well, then when she sent the actual blood work back, she said, keep up the good work. You know, my A1C had actually went from six, seven to five, seven, because I did a physical here at the house with some blood work. 
my wife was trying to get some more life insurance. I think she's trying to kill me. But anyway, <laughs> he, um, the nurse came out, took my blood work, and when he came back, my A1C was 5'7". And it went from 6'7 wow. to 5'7". And I was wow. like, man, man. And when I got my A1C back a couple weeks ago from the VA, it was 6'0". So I hurry up and called my partner Vic, the doctor. I was like, hey, man. Why is my A1C going up? He said, no. He said, the tough dog. He said, all the labs come out different, depending on the lab and the test they use. He said, you right in there. I said, my lab, my A1C was 5.7. I ain't had no sugar. No other, maybe some processed meat. I might have caught a couple carbs here and there. Why is my A1C? He said, no, that's, if you can go take it, another test somewhere else, it might come out even lower than that, you know, so kind of made me relax on that, but I could not wait to see my doctor. My, now, another issue that I'm having, and I don't know I wanted to find a primary because I do have health insurance. I still continue to go to the VA. I want to find a doctor that has this frame of mind. And I haven't been able to find one in network because I'm with Blue Cross Blue Shield. You know, I've Googled it. I, I, even on their website, it's nowhere listed where you ketogenic type doctor where they would cover it. Mm -hmm. So I, I found I listened to another doctor. He was saying he it's called comprehensive medicine or something like that. Um, so I Googled that, and there's a lot of them in my area, but none take insurance because they say the insurance companies, the sad part, insurance companies want a diagnostic code. They can't get insurance reimbursed, in other words, right. you know, because the insurance companies won't reimburse them for that kind of practice. Yeah. It's got to be the normal, this is what you got, this is what we're giving you for it, you know. And I'm like, oh, yeah. man, that's kind of – so I've had to rely on you, you guys and – Dr. Barry and the other doctors for and trust, and I trust what I what I heard immediately. I trust it because it made it, it made perfect sense to me, you know. And the evidence was me, you know. I, I felt like at first I might be experimenting with myself, but <laughs> it didn't take a couple of days to realize, hold up, this is actually working. I feel it now, you know what I mean. So I trust what I hear yeah. because I'm able to kind of. Some doctors use a lot of deep medical terms, but I can follow them. You know, yeah. I can't repeat everything, but I follow. I get the gist of everything they're saying. Yeah. My issue with carrying I mean, the message. Yeah. I, I think that, like, doctors, well, I mean, the people in the medical industry, I mean, they talk about the things that are going to give us uh, longevity and health in the long run. But I feel like if you're feeling bad now, that doesn't lead to longevity. Like, you know, anything that makes you feel good and better and be stronger and healthier now is a good thing that will lead you towards longevity. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. The feeling bad would lead to a longer life. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> I'm so, sorry anyway. I get carried away. I get carried away when I go to talking about this, man. I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to sustain <laughs> myself. I'm supposed to be getting <laughs> No, I love your enthusiasm and it's, uh, you know, and it's just really inspiring and awesome to hear about how well it worked for you. But tell me now, so what about your family? You know, you said your wife like is, you know, she still likes her sweets and candy, huh? And the kids uh, are un unenthusiastic. She get real upset with me sometimes when I be like, what you eat? <laughs> I mean, you know, as long as I'm, as long as I'm cooking meat, she'll eat it. And that'll be it. And mm -hmm. I think I've gotten her to go like three weeks strict carnivore. You know, I wouldn't, I didn't go out of town or nothing. And she did well. Now, when I'm going to work, I'm kind of curious, you know, but she started seeing benefits. Even if she was sneaking, doing her, you know, she still was getting benefits. Cause I what, think, I what feel benefits like, did she see? She started losing some pounds. Mm -hmm. her, her inflammation. She would get, she would get like inflammation around her face or whatnot. It was, it was, I could look at her face. Her face was starting to, you know, I could see the inflammation leaving. You know what I mean? And and she was just, she would be like sick three, four days a week, you know, with, because she has a back issue. She goes get treatment for, her and she has to take medication for that. And she was more on her feet, you know. I could just, she could feel it. She could tell it. And so I even she when she up. noticed all of that, she still didn't care. Um, she cared and she like, well, I'm going to be, I, I need my vegetables. I'm going to be keto. And she's like, I would say she's like eight, like 70% on board. 
if you want kind of you know i mean that can be okay like if she's eating you know some vegetables that uh you know no keto products but just like you know broccoli with butter on it and you know and her meat then that's okay right she already she already know the difference now she actually sat down and watched uh a whole canberry video the other day and i think she received it better from him than she do me you know what I mean? <laughs> How you know you're not a doctor? I found something on Grind that says such and such. You can do such and such. I was like, yeah, but you need to look at the source of that information. You know, I I, I don't trust all. I used to trust everything that I read in the store. I used to trust all the information that I'm any information I got online. I would trust that. Since coming to this diet, it's opened my eyes. It makes me wonder: Does Tide really get my clothes fresh and clean? <laughs> I didn't think that they could just say that about something and it not be, you know, necessarily true. So it's changed my whole perspective, the way I look at a lot of life. You know, yeah. now I'm like, everything's a gimmick, you know, and like, I think I heard Dr. Barry say, if they trying to sell you something, you might want to think twice about it, especially if you're trying to sell you something that's going to make you feel this way or do that, you know, and I fell for a lot of that. I'm no longer that way now. Like I said, I pretty much question just regular household products now. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Why does this say that it's going to have me shining? It's my, making my floor shine? Really? Or with, could I just shine? You know, I don't, so yeah. it's opened my eyes in so many ways. You know, let alone I feel clearer, you know, and I, I found out that, you know, that the, 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 I found out what insulin does in my body. How, I didn't know none of this stuff. I found out how my body responds to insulin, how important insulin is in my body and the things that it can cause and lead to, you know, cognitive decline, Alzheimer's, you know, and I've hit that with a, on a couple of people and that kind of got some people interested that I was talking to, you know, about the Alzheimer's. They call it type three diabetes now, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I recently been on the cancer thing, man. I came across the cancer sugar love, cancer love sugar thing, and I've been on that for the last couple of days, man. Finding out that I, I kind of had a feeling that sugar, sugar at the root of everything. I kind of had a feeling sugar was at the root somewhere had something to do with cancer. And when I heard that they, when they test you for it, they shoot you up with some glucose, I mean some fructose, and the fructose goes straight to the cancer. That's how they know it. I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm really, I'm still learning a lot, man. And my main pro- thing is, man, I, it hurts me, man, to not be able to help everybody, you know. And yeah. I'm getting better with that. And I want people to get this information, man, because I love my people. I love all people, you know. Uh, not just not just us brothers. I t- I, I've talked to a few, you know, I don't charters people. You know, I heard once one white lady say to me, boy, you got a nice waist. I was like, well, thank you. You know, I only eat meat, you know. <laughs> Uh, they're like, you only eat meat? I'm like, yep, that's all I eat is meat. You know, or if I'm out and when I take people, when we out of town, I got to take you to eat. You know, and people are like, what are you going to have? You going to come in and eat with us? I say, sure. Even if I'm in Ryan's, I'm going to Ryan's, go straight to the grill. You know, I know how to get what I, you know, what I need, you know. And um, I I, that, I use them opportunities to uh, to put it out there. You know what I mean? Look now at you, me. You... People looking at me. Mm-hmm. Now you said you were doing some fasting before. Are you still doing that, or um, did you like roll back on that? I kind of just stopped for for some reason. You know, I heard it said that if you don't fast, as long as you're eating the right stuff, you know, okay, you just get better, more benefit from fasting. So I were was doing at least three to four days out of the week. I would do eighteen hours from the time oh, okay. I go to sleep till I eat again. And I kind of stopped because I have my, I got a couple of breakfast joints, you know, in the hood, we call them joints. I got a couple of breakfast joints I go to near my job when I get to work and I stop there. And I got the guy in the back, he knows to cook my eggs in fat. You know what I mean? So I go and get me four fried eggs, order fat back, order bacon, and I get two smoked sausages with it. That's, that's, that's my, that's my meal. Wow. Where are these joints? <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> right. I have another we don't have one any just of that like good it. stuff in New York. Right. I have another place just like it, a little further away. They know the same thing. When they see me walk in, we got you. He's going to take that bacon grease he got up there, and he's going to put it in the pan and cook my eggs, you know. So, And they all sell fat back. 
and I love my good fat back in the morning, you know. So I, I was I kind of stopped it for a while, but I'm like, you know, I'm I'm just not. But today, last couple of days, like today, I didn't. I, I take that back. I broke my fast probably about two o'clock on a bag of crackling, and I think the last meal I had last night was like nine. So I did, but I got kind of hungry, you know. Mm-hmm. And hunger is good for me, you know. That means mm-hmm. time to eat. So I ate a yep. couple bags of crackling. I haven't yet to do dinner yet, and I'm kind of wondering what I'm gonna do. Whether it's gonna be beef ribs again tonight, you know. Uh, my wife like I get bored with that. I said okay. Well, I tried to change up what I cook. And I made a cheeseburger casserole. Who can get and bored of ribs? I mean, like <laughs> the most. Del- I, who can get bored of ribs? Like the most delicious food in the world. Like I can eat them every day. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> And so, I, I'm a savory guy anyway. And I talk to them, when I talk to guys, you know, I have a friend who actually cooks meat on the weekend and sells it. And he's suffering with, um, he's suffering with gout real bad. I mean, you know, and that's uric acid. That's an autoimmune issue. And I mentioned, I said, man, you a meat man. You got this big old grill. You be out selling meat. I said, I'm telling you, man, how you can cure it, man. You can get rid. You know, I'm telling you, man. And, I, and he was like, okay, yeah, hi, right, but, you know, hey. You know, I, I just, people, you know, anybody that know me look at me now like, man, you look amazing. I say, I ain't worried about the look. It's about how I feel. I want you to feel what I feel, you know, and I know that you can, man. All you got to do is stop digging. You can get out the hole if you stop digging. That is great advice. And I, you know, I, I hope that more people hear that and listen to us. But, um, you know, we can only do what we can and share our stories and hope that, you know, somebody hears it. So let me ask you this. So what would you do differently at the beginning of your journey? Like now that you know what you know, what would you do differently now than than you did actually in the beginning? The beginning of the the carnivore? Yeah. What were the mistakes that you made and what would you do differently? Uh... The mistakes that I made, um, I don't see a mistake. I haven't. I don't think I made any mistakes. Uh, the difference. I, I'm not too like much. Like some people don't eat I enough. When I started it, I jumped yeah. in and took off with you know, <laughs> with, with basically saying only thing I had to learn was when I traveled. Yeah. Because I was at home when I started. I was kind of concerned. Okay, I got a trip coming up this weekend. We'll be in Charlotte. First trip I did out of town as a carnivore, the group I had went to a Brazilian steakhouse for dinner that night. How about yeah. that? Yeah. Oh man, they <laughs> walked around out. with racks of meat. They had racks yeah. of meat walking around. I'm like, man, I'm at. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. I, um, I don't see. I don't. I, it's hard. It's hard being a carnivore for carbs to sneak in. I think I think anyway, it's hard to, unless I'm eating the processed meat, you know, and I'm still a little concerned about it. I still think about the processed meat a little bit, you know, but I don't eat enough of it. You know, I say I don't eat it enough. You know what I mean? If I'm out of town for a couple of days, if I had to grab four hot dogs at the truck stop, I'm good. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm not, a, you know, I don't I don't see much difference, man, other than the fact because my my like I said, my risk schedule is so different on a daily basis. You know, so tonight I know I got to go out tonight. I won't get back home at 1 a.m. I got to be back up at 5 in the morning, 4.45 in the morning. I know I won't go to the gym on that. I'm not going to go to the gym if I didn't get over five hours sleep. I just go straight to work. So, I mean, I might not leave the house till 5.30, 6 o'clock. But I, I just had to learn how to deal with the, la- the different rest patterns that I have. You know, sometimes I have to drive through the night, you know, on the weekend. So, you know, uh, I can I can tell the difference in how I feel. You know, when I'm doing my my the my, way my days fluctuates. You know, so I don't really see anything I would I could have done differently. Um, I don't I don't know. All right. Well, so do you shop weekly, or how do you do grocery meal prep or weekly meal prep or whatever? And do you find it expensive? Yes and no. Like I told my wife, she's like, we can't afford to be eating steaks every day. 
you know, I was buying ribeyes at Walmart. They like three of them for like almost 40 bucks, you know. And um, so like once a month we go spend maybe $240, but we still buying stuff for my son, you know, the chicken nuggets, the French fries, you know, stuff like that. So I said, think about it. If we only buy meat, we don't, we're not buying the other stuff. So, you know, we can afford it. So at, right now where we at, it's kind of, in between i mean it's expensive but i found the store a piggly wiggly in the area near my job that meets much cheaper now they ribeyes ain't the best but they beef ribs are just as good as the, as the mclaren farm and walmart and they're a lot cheaper so i've been buying those um but like i said my freezer won't hold i tried going out one time uh one time and just buying a lot of meat but i don't have room for i need to get a deep freeze so I kind of buy enough to make it a couple weeks at a time, you know, then I go start going back to the store and, and restocking the meat. But yeah, it, it can get, it can be expensive. I don't, I haven't had an opportunity. I went to a butcher shop one time and mm-hmm. checked the prices on grass fed. And I said, I'm good. I'll, I think I can deal <laughs> with the, um, I think I can deal with yeah. the, you know, and you know i do well, do a what lot about of finding a local farmer and like buying a side of beef i've been considering that i've been hearing a lot about that lately and i've heard I, about I, people I, getting the price down to you know three dollars a pound for the meat like when you're three four dollars yeah but you know you're talking about buying like half a cow or you know what would i put a cow well, you have to get that deep freezer. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, your friends, like if you can get four of you to go in and you take a quarter of a cow, I think like depending on the cow, you know, maybe there's like 900 or 1,000 pounds of edible, Ooh. you know, meat on it. So you, if you take a quarter, you would get 250 pounds, which is still more than you can put in a regular freezer. Man. But, you know... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I think it is sort of expensive, but I think it not buying the other stuff that I used to buy. I don't. I, I haven't decided. I haven't determined if it's level. I mean, I'm still working on becoming financial, fiscally more fiscally responsible. You know, that's one of the things I work on in my, you know, in my both my lives. You know, I'm still working on getting yeah. fiscally responsible. Like I said, I came from a. a I lived a whole nother life. I had, I've been fortunate enough to live two lives in one lifetime, you know, because <laughs> on the other side, yeah. now I'm living, you know, and believe it or not, the power company don't care about what I used to do, uh, what I used to eat. <laughs> they just concerned about that, you know, so um, I'm still, up. It's, I, I think it's, I don't consider, I don't even think about it when I buy it. That'd be my wife talking about it. Hey, you know, this is, yeah. I'm like, ah, man, I'm eating it. I'm buying, you But think you know. about how much those diabetic, uh, you know, materials cost. And nowadays, I used to see, uh, you know, people would put up signs up on the street, you know, cash for your house and stuff like that, trying to get people to, to give up their money. But now I see signs for cash for your diabetic supplies. And I think, my God, what, you know, what is going on out there that this is now like currency on the black market? Like, you know, I, you can you sell know I'm like, script. I don't know. Yeah, I can you sell can sell script. all your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The VA sent them to me in the mail, but I could actually sell them. People sell them online. But the one thing I've been wanting is a continuous glucose meter just to have one because i was listening to some lady do a seminar or something she said every human should have one if people if regular people had a continuous glucose meter on that's a window inside your body they probably would stop eating carbs and sugar if they had one if they saw what happens to them every time they sit down and have that meal and they look at their blood sugar go whoop, they might say oh, oh, oh hold on i might need to change that you know so I just wanted one just for the seat, you know. I don't really need it because I priced them, and my, the VA won't. Do you have to have an appointment? That I mean, you have to have a prescription to have to actually get one um, with your insurance, like where your insurance pay for it. But if you just go out and buy it, they're very expensive. I asked the guy just the other day at the pharmacy. Mm-hmm. He was like, uh, "It's like two hundred bucks for the reader and two uh, strips or like." 150 or something for a couple of them i'm like oh no i'll just prick my fingers <laughs> i'm good I'm yeah yeah i think i mean i wanted to be able to see every eight minutes 
and just get a you know and it gives you the graph after eight hours of yeah. where I'm where I'm staying at you know because I know my blood sugar fluctuates depending on what I'm doing and how much activity I'm exerting you know I know that's normal but the spikes you know but yeah. I, I, I I've gotten so comfortable where I'm at I don't think I'm ever spiking because I'm not usually doing nothing that would spike me yeah well, you know, maybe you can get one yet. I don't know. Maybe you can push your doctor to, to go ahead and prescribe it. I don't know. I felt kind of iffy about having something stuck in my body. Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, yeah. I'm just kind of like, oh. I, don't think I feel I will, like I would hit it against something and it would hurt. <laughs> <laughs> they say they they say they painless, but they look painful. Like it's actually stuck yeah. to your arm reading your blood. How can it not be painful? Yeah. But I think I'm, I think I'm good. I, I, I don't I don't I don't I don't think I need it. That's just something I was, you know. I get bright ideas sometimes and want stuff, and then I think about it like, nah, I don't really need that. <laughs> yeah. So would you say you're at your goal, or is there anything more that you're trying to accomplish? I believe that. I believe that the things that happen pretty fast happen pretty fast. I still feel like I'm still getting healthier. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm. I don't. I got I got just a little bit, maybe a half an inch still hanging around here. When I stand up, I can't see it, but when I sit down, it, you know, I'm actually I have never saw a six pack in my life. I can actually see my the six pack coming in, you know, there now with this last one. Wow. I believe, yeah, I do some ab work in the gym now on the machine. I got with the weight, but anyway, um. I feel like I'm still a, a still a process. I'm only ten months in, you know, and uh, I think I still got. I, I, I just think it's more to come. I don't. I might. It might be more subtle, but not not as drastic. But I think subtle things are still mm -hmm. lying ahead. Yeah. Awesome. You know, I don't think that. I wouldn't think that out of all the years of eating the standard American diet, a sad diet, that ten months. Everything would be gone. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. you know. But far as the weight, my weight has not moved from 198 in at least seven months. Based on how much water I drank at the time when I step on the scale, it's mm -hmm. always the same number. I don't even step on it no more because I'm tired of seeing the same number. <laughs> I'm thinking I might step on it and see a little less, but I'm having well, buzzed. but are your inches still changing? Are you noticing no. that? I've been a 34 constantly, a 34 for the last seven, eight months. I've been when I've been, I got down to a 34 pretty quick. I, well, I, I, maybe I, try I adding in, maybe try adding in a 36 hour fast once a week and see what happens. That's why I started back. That's what I'm thinking. I'm glad you told me that. Uh, last couple of days, I had fasting in my mind. I'm a fast because you know I started noticing something I was doing, and that's eating, and I wasn't really hungry in the morning. Mm. And I'm like, I don't, you know, I, even though I know I'm eating what's right, I say, I'm really wasting my, I don't need to eat right now. I'm not hungry. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'd be afraid that once my day gets started and I get busy at work, I won't have time when, if I do get hungry. So I say, let me, let me eat now. That way, if I'm busy and I ain't got time to get back to get nothing, I'm already good. But I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm just, if I get hungry, I'll just wait until I can eat. But so I'm, I'm about to, yeah, I'm going to try it at 36 hours. You know, yeah, also, well, let um, me know how it goes. I would love to hear. And, um, yeah, and in six months, you know, you should come back and let us see the new physique and let, let's see those abs. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not trying to body build. I just love, I love feeling fit as a whistle. I'm still skinny, guy. I'm still skinny, guy, but yeah. I just feel so fit. Well, everybody likes some abs, and, you know, so yeah, if you get them, I want to hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I really appreciate your, you know, coming on and letting me know, telling me your story, sharing your story with everyone. Um, I know that it is going to be really helpful. You know, we have um, a lot of people who are, you know, have a similar background to you. And so hearing you and hearing your success is really going to mean a lot to us, to someone else who's, who's looking to hear, um, you know, a, hear, hear a voice like yours. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you.
And I will definitely want to have you back to hear a follow up in some time and stay in touch with me on on Facebook and on Instagram. And I will see you in the Facebook group. And um, and I look forward to uh, ca- catching up with you and all of you who are watching. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I'll see you all next week.